Jerry at Fair Oaks. Hey, Lee, what are we heading out this way for? Mm, I thought we'd take a walk out to the polo field and watch the practice. Don't you want to? Oh, sure. I was just wondering where we were going is all. Mm, you haven't got anything else to do, have you? Uh -uh. All my demerits are worked off. I'm okay with my studies. In fact, I've got nothing but time on my hands. <laughs> <laughs> just a gentleman of leisure, huh? That's right. <laughs> Only I'm not so sure about the gentleman part. <laughs> Why, Lee Phillips, how you talk. <laughs> huh. I'll have you know I'm both a gentleman and a scholar. Only I'm not so sure about the scholar part after getting that tough arithmetic problem from Mrs. Gardner this morning. Oh, you mean the one about the train that travels 60 miles an hour? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not a tough problem. Oh, no? no? I'll have an answer by the time we go to class in the morning. Oh, sure, so will I. But the question is, will it be right? <laughs> you better will. I'll tell you, if you can't figure it out, I'll help you with it. Okay, then we'll both be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you started all this kidding anyway. I think you said something about me not being a gentleman a while ago. That's what started. <laughs> okay, I quit. Good. Oh, well, say, I meant to ask you. You wrote that letter to Mr. Randall, didn't you? Sure, last night in study hall. You saw me. Mm, I thought that's what you were doing. Uh-huh. I mailed it, too. Gee, I sure hope he answers it right away. And sends the money. Yeah. I think you're right about that stranger. What's his name? Uh, Mr. Russell. Mm -hmm. Just like you said. Seems awfully funny for a perfect stranger to want to lend Mac the $250 to help him with his invention. Yeah, he's just a little too anxious to suit me. Mac's easy and trusts everyone. If he isn't careful, he'll lose his invention. I sure hope Mr. Randall sends you your money before Mac signs that contract with Mr. Russell. Uh, what did you say in the letter, Jerry? I explained the whole thing. Of course, I didn't tell him what Mac's invention was, but I told him I thought it was very good and that, well, I, I said I wanted to invest my money. Mm, well, that was a good way to put it. I told him that it was a business proposition. Well, he should like that. I, sh I hope so. But, well, Mr. Randall's mighty careful about money matters. It wouldn't surprise me if he wrote it back and said he wanted to think it over for a week or so. Oh, if he does that, it'll be too late. Yeah, I know it. Well, we'll just hope for the best. Yeah, that's all we can do. I've done my part now, and... The rest is up to Mr. Randall. You didn't tell him about having to get the money right away on account of the stranger, did you? No, but I told him I had to have quick action. I even told him to send the money airmail. And did you mail your letter airmail? Oh, sure. Hey, there's your friend, Jerry. Where? Who? Over there, standing in front of the gym. Oh, I see who you mean. <laughs> Red Morrison. Mm -hmm. Say, he's no friend of mine. Did you know he's been reinstated as a cadet officer? No. Mm -hmm. He's a captain again. Oh, when did this happen? Oh, Ted told me about it right after lunch today. Well, what happened? Just what I figured. Major Davis called a special officers' meeting, and he and Captain Gardner and Captain Rowland and all the other officers decided to reinstate Red. They figured that his saving Harold from drowning made him worthy of a cadet captain's rank. Yeah, and I suppose they canceled his demerits, too, huh? Mm, I guess so. Well, that's the way it goes. I'm still peeved about it, though. Why, Lee? Well, if you'd have saved Harold like you intended to, maybe you'd have sergeant stripes now instead of Red being reinstated. Oh, I, I doubt that. Oh, here comes Red, Jerry. Looks like he's deliberately walking toward us. Yeah, suppose he wants to let us know he's a captain again. Mm, that would be just like him. Hey, shall we salute him or wait until he tell, tells us he's been reinstated? <laughs> hey, that's an idea. Let's make him tell us. I'm afraid it would please his vanity too much if we saluted him without his having to tell us about it. <laughs> Hey, we're not supposed to know about it anyway, are we? Oh, no. Most likely Ted Metcalf will announce it a drill tomorrow afternoon. Here he comes now. Hey, you do the talking if there's any to be done. Shh, okay. 
Where's old Salute? Uh, Salute? For what? Don't these gold bars mean anything to you anymore? Gee, I didn't notice them. But say, you've been made a cadet captain again. Well, swell, Red. Congratulations. Never mind that. All I want from you is respect. Where's that salute? Yes, sir. That's better. Now, how about you, Cadet Dugan? Yes, sir. Do you call that a salute? Try it again. Yes, sir. I still don't like it. Let me see that forearm inclined at 45 degrees, hand and wrist straight. Now, look me in the eye. That's better. Now, drop your hand with a snap. That's much better. Now, just so you won't forget it, salute me five more times. All right, I'm waiting. You think you can remember that now? Yes, sir. All right, that'll be all. You're still at attention. I am at attention. Pull those shoulders back. Chin in. You too, Phillips. Yes, sir. I dislike correcting you men, but you understand we cadet officers have to keep you plebes in order. Oh, yes, sir. Is that sarcasm, Dugan? Oh, no, sir, not at all. All right, that'll be all. You can go now. Thank you, sir. Never mind that. <laughs> the same old Red. I thought being demoted might have taken some of that out of him. You know, Lee, I think I know what's the matter with him. I think his trouble is he's in love. <laughs> in love? Uh-huh. <laughs> in love with himself. Oh, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Do you think I'm right? Oh, absolutely. I've always said he thinks an awful lot of Red Morrison. <laughs> you know... I hope I never get to be like him if I get to be an officer. I'd rather not be an officer. Oh, I don't think you'll ever have to worry about that. I don't think anyone could come near being like him. Now, take all the rest of the cadet officers. They do their duty and dress us down when we're wrong, but oh, they do it in a nice way. It's true, we have to learn discipline, and we have to learn it from the cadet officers. But there are two ways to give out orders, and Red always uses the wrong way. Yeah, you're right. I don't mind getting called down by Ted Metcalf. He always explains why he's doing it and makes you feel glad for the correction. That's it, exactly. Oh, well, let's skip it. Yeah. Hey, look, there's Cully Newsom. Hey, and, and he isn't riding with the rest of the fellas. I wonder how come. Well, let's walk over there and find out. Okay. Hey, Cully. Hello there. How is it you're not up on a pony, cowboy? Oh, Sergeant Alden wants me to watch the other fellas first. It's ridiculous. I've seen hundreds of polo games. And as for riding, <laughs> well, there isn't a horse here spirited enough for me. Oh, yeah? How about the sergeant's pony? I'll bet you couldn't even stay up on him. Is that so? Come on now, cut it out. Don't start an argument. Cadet Newsom, come here now. Get ready to mount your pony. Yes, sir, coming. Uh, come on, Lee, let's go over by the fence. Mm, okay. What's your pony's name, Cully? Rascal. But that's not a good name for him. He's anything but a rascal. He's a pretty horse, isn't he? Mm, he sure is. Hey, listen. What? Quiet, Jerry. I thought I heard the phone ringing in the sergeant's little office there in the stable. Sure it is. I'll go answer it. Tell the sergeant, will you? No, okay, Lee. Uh, sergeant Alden. Save your breath. Wait till he comes over to this side. You don't seem very excited now that you've been made on the polo team. Oh, all these preliminaries seem so foolish. Well, you have to learn the game before you can expect to play it. You ready, Newsom? Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. Uh, your telephone was just ringing, and Cadet Phillips went to answer it. Oh, here he comes now. Uh, Captain Gardner is calling you on the telephone, sir. Oh, thank you, Phillips. Oh, here, here Jurgen. You hold my horse while I go answer that call. Yes, sir. I'll be right back. Hey, hold it, fella. Ah, there, that's a good horse. Now I'll show you whether I can ride the sergeant's horse or not. Here, you hold Rascal Lee. Well, you can't ride the sergeant's horse, Cully. He won't like it. I'll only take him once around the field. I'll be back before he finishes pony. You better not, Cully. I'll just tighten up this cinch strap. The saddle's much too loose. Hey, no, it isn't. That cinch is just right. That horse won't stand for it any tighter. You don't know any more about this horse than I do, Dugan. Whoa, there. That's better. Now watch me ride him, Mr. Dugan. Come on, boy. Get up. Hey, hang on. He'll throw you. Oh, I knew this would happen. Watch out, Cully. Hey, look at him go. Wow. Did you see him jump that fence? Hey. Hey, he's running away. And he's heading right for that little path up by the cliff. We've got to stop him, Jerry. They'll both go over if he gets up on that narrow path. Here, give me those reins. I'm going out after him. Here, Rascal. Let's go get him. Come on, boy. Hurry, Jerry. Hey, hey what's going on there? Come back here, Dugan. Hurry, Sergeant. Jerry's gone after Cully. Is that him heading for the cliff? Yes, sir. I... Hey, he's got my horse. He hasn't got a chance on that animal. Jerry's gaining on him, but I don't think he'll be able to head him off before he gets to the cliff. Come on, Phillips. Let's get up there.
Jerry's alongside of him now. Yes, but they started up that path. He's reaching for your horse's reins. He's got him. He's jumped off his horse. What's he trying to do? Oh, he's trying to drag him to a stop, but I don't think he can do it. That horse of mine will just keep going and drag Jerry along with him until he can't hang on any longer. Come on, hurry, Phillips. I'm coming, sir. Oh, why does not Newsom try to oh, help? That's all he can do to hang on to the saddle and keep from falling. He's slowing down. He's going to stop. He is stopping. Yes, sir. Well, that boy is all right. What nerve. Now, get Rascal there and tie him up to that tree. I don't want him running away. Yes, sir. Well, right there is all right. That's good enough. Now, come on. Oh, that poor horse is puffing like a steam engine. I should think he would be after a ride like that. Jerry's not getting up, sir. He's hurt. It looks that way. But Newsom is all right. He's getting down now. Oh, this is a shame. I'm afraid Dugan took some pretty hard bumps there. He's moving a little. Help him, Collie. Hey, don't try to get up, Dugan. I'll help you in just a second. It's not wise to move him until you can see how badly he's hurt. Ah, that boy's a marvel. He's not only brave, but he's a good little horseman as well. He knew what he was doing, let me tell you. Are you all right, Jerry? I don't know. I guess I am. Oh, oh my arm. No, no, take it easy now, son. Is this the arm that hurts? Yes, sir. Let me see if you can move it. There. Oh, it hurts, though. No, no, I shouldn't wonder. It's pretty badly bruised. How's the other arm? How are your legs? They seem to be all right. Is your horse all right, Sergeant? I'm sorry if I hurt him, but there wasn't anything else I could oh, do. Oh, no, no, no. Never mind about him. He's all right. Well, here's some. I'm, I'm awfully sorry, Sergeant. Yeah, I should think you would be. Dugan might have been killed trying to save you from going over this cliff. You had no right trying to ride my horse. You know, I'm going to recommend a very severe penalty for this, Newsom. Yes, sir. And I'm going to see that you get a fitting reward for this rescue, Dugan. But right now, we'll have to get you over to the infirmary and put you to bed for a few days. Oh, no, I'll be all right. I don't want to go to the infirmary. <laughs> That's what you'll have to do. You know, it'll take a few days to heal those bruises, and, and you'll be lucky if the doctor doesn't find any broken bones. Oh, you lead my horse back, Phillips. Yes, sir. And Newsom. Newsom, you get Rascal and take him back to the stable. He's tied to a tree down there. Yes, sir. Sergeant Alden. Yes, Dugan. Hey, can I say something to Lee before he goes? Oh, of course you can. Certainly. Well, what is it, Jerry? Listen, Lee. Yeah? If I'm going to be put to bed, how are we going to help Mac? Maybe I'll get that letter and the money from Mr. Randall tomorrow. Well, I'll tell you. I'll find out about the letter for you. And if it comes, I'll bring it right over to the infirmary. You just get well and leave the rest to me. Thank you.